so welcome. Uh, let's stop one second and think, why are we all here at this precise TEDx event? Think why speakers, volunteers, and yourself all decided to come. The answer is actually really simple, and it's in front of you. Ideas worth spreading. It's a vision that is so powerful that managed to move people all around the world to join us today. But it was not only that. It was also the fact that the X exists, and that there is a process to allow people to engage and to create something like this. So if you have an idea, maybe a company that you're starting, a startup, think about it and think for a second, can I create a community around it? Can I actually manage to make people help me to make my vision a reality? So my name is Juan David Mendieta, and I'm going to be talking today about what is a community-centric business. So to talk about this, I first have to tell you what I did the last year of my life when we started Chiron. Chiron is a company that is focused in the use of blended learning education for the integration of refugees into the European society through higher education, through education. One year ago we started, and today we have more than 300 people supporting this project. In more than six countries, with five academic programs, more than 100 partners from universities to companies in, te in the tech industry, and more than 300 media press releases in magazines like Al Jazeera or The Spiegel in Germany. Uh, when we started this, we realized we need to overcome the barriers that refugees have to access higher education. So we went and we looked, and it, the UNCHR, which is the High Commissioner for Refugees from the UN, uh, realized that there were four main barriers, which are the lack of financial capabilities, the lack of legal status when they arrive to different European countries, actually the capacity in the colleges in Europe that is not meant for this massive amount of people arriving, and the language barriers. So we realized, can we create a model using everything that is out there to solve this problem? And we created what we call the Chiron methodology. We decided that we wanted to provide bachelor programs, three-year bachelor programs for refugees, with a component of blended learning. So the first two years are online courses, well known as MOOCs. And the third year, we go and we partner with a university, and we help the refugee to go through an online curriculum the first two years plus support to a third year in which they hit the university, and then at the end they get the university degree. This model managed to fix all those problems, because to our students, we don't ask them for any paper when they start. They have two years to get them, and they just need them when they are going to enter the third year. All the education is for free, so they can just get it started as soon as they arrive to a new country. We focus on different language courses and on having a variety of MOOCs in different languages, especially a lot of refugees speak more English than maybe German or Dutch when they arrive. Uh, but it was not only that. We start growing, and then we realized that our community wanted to start creating things on top of it. We started with a program about teaching refugees to become software developers, a one-year program that would target the needs of the lack of software developers in Europe, and then in this way integrate them into society. We work on setting up a platform for companies that are willing to hire them to post jobs for them. This, this platform is so far the most successful platform for placement of refugees into jobs in Germany. We created a space called Migration Hub, where everyone that is interested in this issue can just go and meet other entrepreneurs and try to figure out solutions for the refugee crisis. And finally, we created Chiron Ventures, because we realized that a very efficient way for integration is to support entrepreneurship and to help them to become entrepreneurs in our society. So at the beginning, I was talking about community. So why do people take part? I was talking about 300 people in this project. And believe me, this was not about paying people. This was not about money. It was about people wanting to help. So I'm going to tell you about it. If you actually think about it, there is nothing substantially different between this concept and any other NGO supporting refugees or any other blended learning uh, methodology created by a lot of tech startups, or in between any other innovative concept born in Berlin or in Europe. So why is that people come to help us and not the other thousands of them? This is what I'm going to tell you about, because what I did was that I took 
our experience, and I put it in these very simple points. So you're going to take your idea, and you're going to do these four things. You're going to have a big vision, you're going to try to become a movement, you're going to build processes for the community, and you're going to focus on explaining what are the benefits for the community to su for supporting you. So the big vision. What is a big vision? A big vision is basically something, a, a goal that is so big that people just cannot believe that you can accomplish it by yourself. So it's just that simple. You have this idea, you tell it to people, and they just think you're crazy. But because they think that, they realize that they have to help you. And they realize that it's not about you doing this, but a lot of people to get to the solution. In our case, our vision at the beginning was world-class education for refugees. Internationally accredited degrees for everyone, anytime, anywhere, for free. And they for free especially make everyone think, oh, you're crazy. So I'm going to have to help you. Uh, and then we decided, OK, we're not only a nonprofit. We need to become a movement. And how we do that? And how everyone can do that? They need to, you need to understand that it's about freedom and about understanding that you cannot control everything that happens. You need to allow other people to interact with your ideas and to also take decisions. So then it comes the concept of what is entrepreneurship, which means people inside your organization taking entrepreneurship projects and taking their own decisions. But if you allow these two things, then you need to understand that experimentation is going to be a very big part of it. Because a lot of times, things are not going to go correctly. There are going to be problems, but you need to be OK with that. At Chiron, we had a very simple structure, like any other company, divided by different business areas. But we realized that if we allow people to come and help us to do uh, our work, they could create more business units. They could create regional offices, and suddenly we start opening offices of Chiron through volunteering in different countries. And then, even better, we realized that people wanted to build businesses with our brand. So, uh, does anyone know what it is? Anyone? So, this is the value chain of Port, and it really doesn't matter if you don't know what it is. But what it matters is that it's widely used by organizations to map their processes and to map how are they going to build something to deliver it to a final customer? What is important here is that a lot of people don't realize that actually community needs to be a process. And it's not only about having this big vision, but about understanding that with that, you can call people to you, but you need to be able to engage them. You need to create processes to attract people, to motivate them, to involve them, and to retain them. You need to create onboarding guides. You need to be able to give project-based a methodology with, with the people that work with you. And I'm going to tell you a story about this. So at Chiron, we had a deadline. For the 15th of October 2015, we wanted to launch our platform to start with the, the beginning of the German, German education semester. When we started to think about this deadline, we actually had roughly two months to accomplish it, and a very small team of people. We said, okay, we need expertise, and we need top talent of development to accomplish this. We say, okay, can we build it ourselves? Maybe not. So let's try to use the community. And we start to actively look for people to tell them, this is the goal, the 15th of October, we are going to create a university. Suddenly, people from all over the world, developers, started to call us from New York, from Taiwan, from Brussels, from Amsterdam, from Berlin, from whatever. And they all came to us and started to work on this project. When they came, we had a very well-prepared system to make them understand how our code worked, to make, to make them understand what we wanted, and then we divided everything project-based. We basically empower people to take action. The 15th of October, we released the platform, and 1,300 refugees started to study at Cairo. And the last one, it's about benefits. So we talk about vision and processes, but it's also important to understand that there is no such thing as a free lunch. And I think sometimes nonprofit organizations forget this. They forget that people are not only helping them because they believe in that, but because they get out of it. And this is true for TED, if you think about it. We all here getting something out of it, even me. So to illustrate that, I want to tell you a small story. At Chiron, we needed to build a student support service, because we realized online education is very nice, but students are going to have problems. They're going to have to call people. They need to have mentors. So then in Munich, a small team started to build this student support office. What they did was to understand that if you need to have mentors and you don't have people that wanted to engage to support the students, you need to give them something. And that something, in this case, was personal development. They started to set up 
teaching trainings and to train the volunteers that wanted to support into something that they wanted to learn. They, we would train them to, for them to pitch the idea of Chiron, but then after that, we would also send them to pitch that idea in big places like this, to ministers, big vice presidents of companies, and people just felt really engaged. So let's do one second and let's come back to your idea, if you have one. And I'm going to try to give you an advice of how can you accomplish what we did or what Ted did and create a community. So the first thing is that this idea that you have, you're going to have to understand that it's not an idea. And you need to take your pitch and change it and start talking about we have a vision, not I have an idea. After you do that, think about that vision and think everything that you need to do to make that vision, to control that vision. Once you manage to, con to understand what you need to control that vision, take everything else and make it open source, no matter if it actually brings profit. If, it's, if it doesn't control your vision, you have to put, make it open source. How are you going to do this? It's actually a sim simple uh, graph that I made to illustrate this. So if you take every task, <coughs> every, everything that you do in your organization or that you would have to do to, to make your idea a reality, you can always think, okay, is this important for the control of my vision and how much value it creates for other people? And if you find these sweet spots, things that create a lot of value for the people and actually doesn't, uh, you can still control your company, you, you got to outsource that. And just to finish, just remember that Ted and us and everyone here, the whole point why this works is because there is a big vision, but because there is a process behind it. Thank you very much.